I finally found the third PowerBook power supply. But this time I don't want to try the mallet because, well, it's a bit too much aggressive. But I want to try the vise. I will use the vise to just go ahead and apply pressure to this side here. And hopefully I will split the joint where both shelves were welded. Because as we know, there is no welding on those two sides here whatsoever. So hopefully, by just applying pressure right here, I will be able to split the case in two nice clean halves. Let's give it a try. Here is what I came up with. Essentially, I've got a, the power supply plus two screwdrivers, which are just holding down those two pieces here. Because if, if I would just go ahead and put the power supply directly into the vise, it would be just making pressure over the corners and then split the case this way, which is no good. So hopefully, something good will happen. Oh, I can hear it cracking. That's good. Again, so it's cracking. Hopefully, I won't sh it won't shatter into million pieces. Let's just back off a little bit. See how the case is doing. Now it hasn't break. It hasn't break yet. Let's just apply a bit more pressure. And hopefully, so yeah, that is in a very nice place. You can see it's just directly pushing over here. But this one here went a bit further. Yeah, it's starting to... The other thing that might be... Oh, here's what happened. What's happening? Crack. I've been... Oh, I did it. No way. Look at that. Did not split the bottom, but... Oh, it's beautiful. So I think that finally I nailed it. Um... What I was doing, essentially, I I used two screwdrivers like this. So the ideal would, the ideal uh, would be to put a little spacer like this big onto this side here. So hopefully we'll bend this piece here and crack like what it did right now. Uh, the good thing is that there is no screw there is no sign of screwdriver prying, and when you glue it together. As you can see, it doesn't. It's a very clean joint on this side as well, so it doesn't look like it has ever never been opened. Um, when I backed off so quickly in the previous segment of this video was because uh, I had the screwdriver like this. It was applying pressure over here, but also onto this side here. So this was bending out. Um, so I thought that this piece here was cracking because it's the most fragile part on of this side here. But fortunately, it's still in one piece. And uh, I may have applied too much pressure because I was also able to separate the plug from the rest of the casing. Which might come in handy when I'm doing the recap because this thing is quite big and bulky. So when I'm just moving the circuit board around, this one here... Without it, it's much easier to work with. Uh, Alright, so now that we got the power supply open, we just need to remove a screw right down there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, that's a screw right here. i just get my super long screwdriver and just unscrew it. Here's the screw. I've already removed the um, this little shield here that was placed right in there, but you you'll have to take that out as well. Then I can just go ahead and lift the board, and there it is. I can clean the capacitor gunk out of the case later. Now um, I'm gonna do a quick check of the fuse, which is still good. It's perfect. And then here are the capacitors that we're going to replace. So we got here a 16 volts, 1200 microfarads. This guy here is a 16 volts, 
180 microfarads. This guy, is, this guy here is a 16 volts 82 microfarad. And lastly, this one here is a 47 microfarad 50 volts. And also notice that there's this capacitor here that was not present on the other two power supplies that I've torn apart. So hopefully that will be good because I don't know, no, I don't feel that I got replacements for it. But it's not uh, an Elna one, so hopefully it will be still good. Um, also, you have to remove this little dab of hot glue, and uh, you want to keep this uh, little inductor steady because if not, you might risk stripping it off. So, I usually go ahead with a pair of pliers and start cutting out the glue. Maybe. All right, got it out. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and heat up my soldering iron, and we're gonna start desoldering them. <clears throat> As for replacement capacitors, I've got mostly Panasonic and a Vichy one. Um, you can you when you order them, you have to maintain the same capacitance, which is the number that ends in microfarads. But you can go with a higher voltage. It's not that if you go with a higher voltage, it will last longer. It's just a safety precaution, really. And because the price difference between uh, a 16 volts or a 25 volts one, 25 volts one is so small that I think that you're better off getting the higher voltage ones. So I usually use a fine tip with a solder sucker. I also have a desoldering gun, but it seems like it's a bit easier to do with the solder sucker. Here we go. I'm also going to take out this one here as well, while I'm down there. Make sure it's not all the solder is removed. And also, let me just remove it from here. It's not enough. Okay. I'm just going to remove the wire. Now we're going to remove the capacitors. Ooh, look at this. It was leaking real badly. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's just disgusting. Wow, just look at it. I think it's the worst one I've ever seen. I will, well, my phone was almost pulling down. Let's get back to focus. There we go. <coughs> I usually pick up a Q-tip, put some alcohol onto it, and then just go ahead and clean the board. And then go just go with the other half and just dry it out. Now it's just nice and shiny like new. Ah, disgusting. Let's see also if we can remove the other ones. Just go ahead and tilt the lamp a little bit. Um I'm just gonna pick up my little pair of pliers. No, I think it we it's still attached. Really? Okay, so it's still attached here. This place there. out there we go got it and we're going to clean that as well okay. 
So let me just go ahead and slide in the replacement. Mind you that capacitors have a polarity. The one with the stripe is usually the negative. And you can also see that the positive has got the a longer lead than the negative. They've marked the positive with a little plus. And usually the negative, as you can see, has got a little dot, a white dot there. So you just go ahead and line it. Fold the leads. You're going to put the other one as well, which is the 180 microfarad one. This this guy here goes in this way. And we're going to fold the leads back. Okay. And now I just go ahead and cut the excess leads. We'll resume with the other one because the memory of my iPhone is almost full. It is now time to do this guy here, which is the 82 microfarads. And there are those two leads, this one and this one. So let's just go ahead and desolder it as well. and was also leaking junk. All right, this is the 82, this guy here. Let me just go ahead and pick up another Q-tip and clean the area around here. All right, so now let's just go ahead and slide in the new one. So it's positive, it goes in this way. And obviously I was doing it backwards, whoops. All right. I just add a bit more solder right over here. Perfect. And the last one is this one here, which are those two leads, this one and this one. Just get this off. And this is a in a fairly tight spot. Just make sure. Yeah. Alright. Just go ahead and pick up my pliers. Just go ahead and move it and pick it out. Here it is. Right, this was also leaking. Uh, it's quite hard to see. As you can see, there's some black goo. So, 
I think that this power supply here, yeah, just started leaking fairly recently. Mm, yeah, because it's still liquid, it's not solid, so it has not dried up. Nice and clean. Mm, positive goes this way in. Yep. So right, I'm gonna push it in. With the help of my pliers. And then I'm just gonna bend the leads again. And I'm gonna solder it. You don't need a high-end soldering iron like mine. I think you can just get away with a cheap one. But if you can, I think it's always better off getting a good model and keeping it forever rather than buying one every time you need to do some soldering so let me check that everything is okay all the solderings look good I didn't put anything backwards so let's just go ahead and pick up the board as you can see there's those notches here where the board just sits in like so. I'm gonna screw it back in. If I find the screw, here it is. Apply this shield here. It's actually a very good touch to add such a shield inside the power supply and then there's this plastic guy here that snaps into here then I have to thread in this little wire and voila we're done you can apply glue obviously once you're sure that the power supply works but I think that for right now, um, I'm just going to put some scotch blue, just to keep it in place. And I'm going to try it out. And if it all works fine, I'm going to glue it with some attack or super glue. Alright, this time we've got a PowerBook 145. Let's plug in the power supply. Just go ahead and plug the lead inside the power book. This power book here has got a fairly twitchy display and you'll see why in a second. And there we go. As you can see it just goes nuts after a few seconds and it just starts blinking and whatnot. Because I think that I did not solder some of the capacitors correctly so now it's just acting strange but as you can see the machine except for the very twitchy display is now working so uh, I, I've had three of those guys here and all three were dead just changed four capacitors and now they're all back in working conditions Perfect. Thanks again for watching.